Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. In this video, I want to go through all of the work and tasks scheduled for this year in relation to all things FPS. As always, these videos are made possible thanks to my very generous patrons and channel members. Thank you guys so much for the support. And if you do enjoy my content, be sure to like and subscribe and tick that notification bell so you don't miss out. All of the links are in the description below. So what I mean by FPS is all things relating to the on-foot aspects of Star Citizen, which is pretty rudimentary compared to what CIG want. They have big plans to expand on what we have now, creating something with depth, tactile interactions, and for combat specifically, something more along the lines of a mix between Battlefield 4 and Armour, as Chris Roberts puts it. Now I am currently working on a full overview of exactly what CIG is intending for the Star Citizen Combat FPS mechanic, so make sure you are subscribed for that. And looking at the roadmap, a lot of the work required to get Star Citizen's FPS more in line with its intended direction is happening this year. So with that said, let us take a look at all of the work planned for 2021 to expand on all things on foot in Star Citizen. So let's kick off with a feature that'll have the most significant impact once it's ready. This is Personal Inventories, and this feature will allow players to physically store weapons, gadgets, consumables, healing items, and more on their person and in vehicles via backpacks, pockets, and containers. It utilizes the new iCache for persistence wherever the player travels, and basically means that you will be realistically limited to what you can carry based on your outfit and equipment. For example, right now the Moby Glass stores everything the player owns, meaning that you could have bought 100 med pens and you can just keep equipping them one after the other until they are all used up. With physical inventories, you'll only be able to carry on your person what is realistically possible and then the rest will need to be placed in a backpack or a box. Now this will redefine the way players approach Star Citizen and require people to decide on what weapons and equipment they might need for each job. And if they forget something, then it's pretty much tough luck. Tactics, planning, coordination, all far more important with personal inventories, and alongside it I would expect to see more options in clothing, accessories like backpacks, and many box container types to allow players to load up items and equipment onto their ships just in case. Now the work for this is set for 25 weeks beginning this month and ending around June, so hopefully we could see early stages of this Coming around quarter two, there are a few other features likely required which are not completing work until later this year, so we will have to see. But it will be one hell of a game changer when it does get implemented. So next on my list is the FPS radar and scanning card. Now this states it'll improve the signature system, supporting much greater distances and dampening of signatures by environmental interfaces and larger signatures. Also, it'll improve scanning driven by the same signature system as the radar and ping available in ships, ground vehicles and FPS. All of the work shown on the roadmap for this task is set to finish at the beginning of April, which is pretty good. And this will really expand on FPS gameplay as all weapons, armors and many items will give off signatures just like our ships do. So heat and EM plus audible signatures as well, not to mention any other signature types that CIG want to implement. This will mean that when moving around on foot planet side, in buildings or in a ship, if you are trying to remain hidden, you'll need to monitor and manage your personal signatures, really expanding on the stealth gameplay, and on the other side, using devices to monitor the environment searching for signatures. Again, this is all about offering more choice and thought while requiring more planning and greater consequences. It will also unlock the opportunity for various FPS scanner and radar types like maybe handheld options or potentially swapping out helmet modules or purchasing various helmets for their functionality. There was also a recent Galactopedia post which was highlighting a new manufacturer called Group Nouveau Paradigm or GNP who actually manufacture radars and scanners. I'm not sure if this means handheld or just ships as they also make spacecraft engines, so the likelihood is it's swappable ship scanners and radars sometime soon. So before we continue this list, on the Galactopedia there was also a slither of information regarding the Titan suit. It'll be made by Virgil Limited, who also make the True Death Pro armor range, and the Galactopedia post for Virgil mentions the Zeus system Titan armor and True Death Pro combat armors are among Virgil's best-selling models. So if CIG are sneaking this description into the Galactopedia, it is a good sign that they have decided on a manufacturer. But that is all the news that I have on that one, I just thought you would like to know. So let's get back to the roadmap. 
Next up, we have Healing Tier 0 and Actor Status Tier 1. This states implementing additional statuses, specifically intoxication and effects from drugs and the associated functional and visual feedback. For healing, it'll allow players to use items with healing properties such as med pens on other players and NPCs. So being able to actually heal someone else will make a huge difference in game. And this can really be seen as the starting point of the medical career. As a medic in your team, you can load up with as many med pens as possible or medical devices as possible just to keep your team alive. Now I'm not sure what other items we will see beyond the med pen and the med gun which we got to see in a sprint report recently but I am excited to see the medical mechanic expand especially when it comes to treating different types of wounds. For statuses tier 1 it'll be interesting to see how the various effects appear for your vision but I can't wait to see the physical effects on your character's bodies from drugs like Widow showing up as those black veins, like what we see on Wallace Klim, who is in Levski. Now this feature is on the roadmap in a couple of locations and the work for it begins around January and ends in June. So let us hope this makes it for a quarter two release. So for the next feature, we are going to look at the PIE or Pi system. This is the player interaction experience. Now there are three tiers for this system and tier zero is hints and interactions and it says a holistic array of complementary features and systems all related directly to the player status, item status, environment status as well as interactions with both the game world and the objects within it. Now the work for this begins in April and ends in June. For tier one this is focusing on lockers and inventories saying it introduces a consistent way to store clothes, armor, and items in a physicalized state. Also includes more robust and tactile method of storing items on shelves and attachment surfaces and builds on the personal inventory, expanding the inventory UI to include lockers. So the tier one is going to be a pretty big one, having locations to store our physical clothing, items, and armors, which will be great. And the work for this begins at the end of June and finishes towards the end of September. Finally, for tier two of the Pi system, this is visor, hood and helmet, which begins work at the end of September and then ends beginning of December. So they each continue after the last one is finished. Now, this system says building on the existing heads up display with a new look and feel, including a new equip and remove experience, boot up and power down sequences and transitions between FPS and ship hoods. This is something I'm very excited to see being able to physically remove and inspect or carry our helmets. This is a feature that we saw a couple of years ago, which will be great for immersion and roleplay, but also a very cool way to check out your helmet, which will be even cooler once physical damage is implemented. The HUD will be being rebuilt in building blocks and similar to what we've seen being done with our ship HUDs, getting some more interesting and unified helmet HUDs, likely based on manufacturer and specific helmet role. Plus the boot up and power down sequence will be cool to see and then how it transitions when you sit in a seat of a ship it'll plug into the ship and give you the relevant information and then when you get out of the ship it'll go back to whatever hood is necessary for the helmet in place. So next on the list is the bespoke taken place which states definable and bespoke animation actions for specific items. For example, the taken place animation for a helmet should be different from a bottle or a grenade. So I'm assuming it's just more refinement to how the player will pick up and put down an item to be more accurate to the shape of the item and likely the item's weight as well. This has 19 weeks of work beginning in April and ending mid-August. So next on my list is Prone Tier 1. This is only a small one which begins work at the end of June until the beginning of December and it says all tasks relating to implementing prone movement by the player and NPCs. So all I can think is that this is just to improve the proning system in some way. I'm not entirely sure, but it does need to be a little smoother from what we have currently, so, so any improvements to proning will be a win. We also have sliding, which introduces a new traversal method for players, allowing us to slide along the floor for short distances, adding a new element to the combat situations. Work on this begins at the end of June and ends early December. Now ladders tier 1 are next which improves the freedom and control while traversing ladders. So being able to aim and shoot weapons, use gadgets, heal and complete other one-handed actions as well as dodge to the side to avoid gunfire or falling debris. 
Now, if I'm honest, any improvements to ladders are a welcome in my book. This will be very helpful, especially as it'll mean that we are less vulnerable on ladders, as many ships have them and you are an easy target while moving up and down. Plus, it could also allow for some engineer gameplay. Using ladders to perform maintenance would be quite cool to see. Anyway, work on ladders tier 1 begins at the end of June and finishes at the beginning of December. Next, we have EVA Tier 2, which is set to further improve the EVA experience following the transition to IFCS, or Intelligent Flight Control System, which is what the ships use. This will also introduce limited EVA fuel and encourage the use of zero-G push and pull and the multi-tool tractor beam. Now, I'm very excited for when CIG create the EVA jets as a separate attachment, which means that not all undersuits or armors will have them attached as standard and you'll need to purchase them separately. It could also mean that we could see an array of various EVA jet types. My personal thoughts on this is they could range in form and function from maybe combat EVA jets, maybe offering quicker movement, exploration EVA jets which could provide larger fuel tanks, and then maybe even a sports option for more agility and top speed. That would be quite cool. Anyway, the work on this is set to begin at the end of June until late September. So leading nicely on from EVA Tier 2 is Zero-G Push and Pull, which is adding the ability for the player to traverse surfaces in Zero-G by pushing and pulling with their hands. Now this will come into play when the player is wearing an EVA suit without thrusters, or if the thrusters are turned off, or of course if you run out of fuel. Very excited to see this feature. It'll make exploring wrecks either without gravity or in space far more immersive and interesting. And work for this began this month and will finish at the end of June. So next up we have Stair Locomotion Tier 1. Now this is to include a new animation which will depend on whether the character is running, walking or sprinting and will procedurally align their feet to ensure they hit each stair correctly. Now this isn't anything that's going to make a huge difference in Star Citizen but CIG are sticklers for detail and I'm sure it will look great. Work on this begins at the end of June and finishes mid-August. So Weapon Handling Tier 2 is the next feature, which is to implement character animations for when they are interacting and customizing FPS weapons, with the aim to add a tactile look and feel to weapon handling, supporting the wider goal of high fidelity character interactions with all relevant objects in the game. So basically, when you attach a sight or a silencer to your weapon, your character's hand will physically appear, remove the current attachment, and place the new attachment. But work on this is starting at the beginning of August and finishing mid-December. So one feature that I was very happy to hear they are planning is magazine stripping and refilling. This will allow players to strip found weapons of their ammunition. They can then remove each bullet and refill their own magazines manually or via a bullet reloader, provided you have one of course. And this feature will only be applicable to ballistic weapons. Now I love that they are getting to the bullet level of interactions once physical and personal inventories are implemented, it will completely change how we play Star Citizen and ensuring that you have everything you need, including enough ammunition. And if you then run out, you might be able to salvage some from weapons found lying around the environment. Otherwise, you're screwed. Now, the work on this starts towards the end of February and finishes mid to late May, and I'm looking forward to seeing this. So leading directly on from that, we have Charge and Drain Tier 0. This is relating to energy FPS weapons or anything that uses a battery and how you will be able to recharge the battery via various methods using your armor suits and so on. Now the card for this says all backend tech tasks related to creating the first pass of charge drain power feature that will be used in future locations and mission updates. So to me this means being able to recharge your energy weapons or powered suits or just items and equipment that use a battery to power them. I'm not sure how it will actually be implemented, but my guess would be maybe static wall-mounted charge points and potentially swappable batteries as well. Work on this begins mid-May and finishes at the end of June. So next up we have Weapon Misfire and Wear, which adds the potential for certain weapons to misfire or malfunction depending on various factors. Now this has 13 weeks work starting at the beginning of August and finishing early November. And this is going to be quite an interesting one to get right. Ensuring the misfire or malfunction is clear to the player, maybe via audible or visual cues, so we know exactly what is happening and not just thinking that it's a bug. It will be directly linked to the physical damage system and the wear and degradation stuff that you see on weapons, meaning that the more a weapon appears in disarray, the more likely it will misfire or malfunction. So you will need to take care and maintain your equipment. 
Also for weapons, we have Overheat, which will add heat management to FPS weapons, meaning players will have to manage their rate of fire, and when the weapon overheats, it will damage the weapon and require a short cooldown before it can be fired again. Now, this Overheat feature begins work at the end of October and finishes mid-December, so it's not for a little while yet. So I thought I would mention hacking tier 0 as this is going to play heavily into the FPS side of things and will be used in future locations and missions. When implemented, it'll be used to access systems and areas that were previously closed and will be represented via a minigame that is displayed on the player's HUD visor. Now this is actually set to release in the first patch of the year at the end of March, so Alpha 313, and I'm interested to see where this will be implemented and how it will work for tier 0. One feature that seems to keep appearing uh, on and off of the roadmap is Surrender. This is to allow players to be arrested without losing a life. So by coming to a halt and powering down their ships when ordered to by security, the security teams will then halt their attack and arrest the player and impound the ship if it is owned by the criminal. Now I'm really looking forward to seeing this one, especially as it heavily ties in with bounty hunting. But in order for it to work properly, there needs to be some greater reason to surrender over fighting to the death. As I feel most people will just choose to keep fighting rather than surrender until more consequences are implemented. Now this is also coming in Alpha 313 and my only thought right now as to making people choose to surrender over fighting till the death or suiciding is via the prison punishments. Now if the prison sentence is drastically reduced for surrendering or vastly increased for not surrendering then it may incentivize people to surrender. Personally it would incentivize me to surrender if I knew I'd be getting out of prison quicker. As I say I'm interested to see this in game and how it will affect the bounty hunting system and luckily we don't have to wait too long. Next up is the new Mobiglass app called the Asset Manager app. This is to support the localized inventories and keep track of all of the player owned items where they are stored and where they need to go to pick them up, transfer them and equip them. So this is going to be quite a vital app that will allow us to keep tabs on everything that we own once it's all physicalized and we can only carry what is realistically possible. Lockers, hangers, apartments, storage units, all these places will be able to store our items and equipment and keeping track of that will be very important. Work on this began this month and finishes mid-May, so we will slowly see the physical inventories coming together this year. Now one feature worth mentioning is a series of three new damage types. We have Plasma, Incendiary and Disarray. Now these damage types will cause damage over time to actors, vehicles and ships. So Plasma weapons having a burn duration effect. When fires ignite in ships, if the player is caught within them, they will get a burn damage over time. And Disarray will likely refer to the aging of various wear and tear effects over a duration of time as things decay. So not entirely FPS related, but it will be a part of that. Work for this begins mid-November until mid-December, so again, quite a way off. So finally on this list is more of a nod to many of the systems that will drastically affect the feel and gameplay of FPS throughout the verse. Now these include, but are not limited to, anything relating to NPC spawn closets, dynamic populations, security systems, NPC schedulers, and all things AI. The reason I mention this is because CIG are working on many systems to get the NPCs of the verse who will eventually make up 90% of the population versus the 10% player population spawning in the required location, be that planet side in cities, villages, settlements and derelicts, as well as space stations or just flying around the verse. This will mean the removal of armistice zones in cities or in space stations and populating the world with characters that we will be bumping into and interacting with in various ways be that friendly, violent, or somewhere in between. It'll be great to see how much work they can do on this this year to getting the NPCs spawning and working correctly, ready for when the quantum system comes online, which is not likely this year for the quantum system, hopefully next year, but we will see. So that brings me to the end of the video. This was a look at all things FPS related getting worked on this year. We are due the next roadmap update on the 27th of January, which will include additional quarterly columns and more, of which I will break down once we get that. So if that is of interest to you, be sure to subscribe and tick that notification bell to be notified when my videos go live. And if you could do me a big favor and hit that thumbs up, I really appreciate that. And if you want to talk more about Star Citizen or if you have any questions regarding the game, be sure to come over to twitch.tv forward slash Brothers Ryan. I would be more than happy to answer them for you. 
Again, a big thank you to my patrons and channel members. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.